what I'm going to introduce today is the topic modeling, like LDA models. So um, I'll start with why we want to use this uh, topic models. Um, so now you have the data from the Twitter. And uh, the next step is about um, how to use the data. So I'm going to give a brief overview about how we're going to use data with topic modeling. And uh, right, so I would like to start from um, this thing about how we dif how the difference in thinking patterns between humans and AI. So for us as a human, when we look at um, a Twitter information, we can know it from the words, like we have a lot of things we can understand. But uh, as I mean, we can ask various of questions, for example, what it's about, what is related to, what does it feel like, what does it mean? Like we, we can ask a thousand questions about it. Um, but for, for example, if we want to write algorithms or like um, an AI, like a small AI, to understand things, like how it's supposed to understand things. Um, I mean, it can also ask a various of questions, but it just get one and zeros because they are built based on one and zeros. So how to make AI understand the text in Twitter? So let's just first start with human, how we understand things. So first we have a, a various of knowledge about the world. So we know about uh, various of topics already. So we know about films, we know about travel, we know about drinks, we know about money, sports, like gifts. We know about fruits, we know about cars. We have knowledge already. And also we have the right level of abstraction. By right level, I'm referring to, we are not using like two simple words that we can't capture the meaning, or we are not using like very complex words, which is a bit misleading. We are using the right amount of abstraction of words when we read context and we send context. That's how we understand things. And uh, the question is how we, um, how we achieve it with the AI. Um, and uh, the things, the first thing, I mean, I, I, I mentioned two things previously, which are the right level of abstraction and uh, the knowledge about the world. So the first question here is how to get the knowledge about the world. So how to create the necessary knowledge for AI to read and understand tweets. And I'm suggesting to use Wikipedia data to learn these knowledges. And um, I, all, I also call it another word, which is topics. So why Wikipedia data? Wikipedia data can, I mean, everybody knows about Wikipedia. It's quite common when we want to search something online. It covers a wide range of topics and it can be considered as a good source of knowledge. And the package we're gonna use is called Jensen. It's a really useful tool for topic modeling and it's really easy to use. And for my part of the presentation, I'm not going to give the code because every code is up there on their website. And uh, for anybody who wish to use this um, topic modeling, you can just uh, go to the website and they have a really uh, detailed uh, description of each single step. Right. So um, this is a demonstrating code about how to use uh, Wikipedia data to uh, in Jensen to create the necessary knowledge. So you can see it from here that we are creating an LDA models and uh, with a hundred topics. And out of those hundred topics, we can see that, I mean, if we print some of those topics, for example, like random print of 20 topics, uh, for topic zero, it has river, lake, island, mountain, area, park, uh, so topic one, we could refer it as like natural views. And uh, for topic two, we can find something like law or government policy. So maybe we can re relate it to as like, I don't know, um, like something related to law or government things. For topic, um, for topic eight, we have film, her, she, he, series episode films. So maybe it's a topic related to film. And for topic um, 15, we have like German, the world, Berlin, German, Germany. 
So it's a topic related to Ger uh, to Germany, I guess. So that's where uh, we can, uh, I mean, from this this list of topics, we can see that the the the, the model that we have has a general um, understanding of of some of the topics in the world, and we can change uh, how many number of topics we have by using the um, the code that is in the third uh, uh, third box that number of topics equals 100. We can change it to like, for example, 200, 300, 400. Depends on uh, whatever you need for your own, um, I mean, your, your own purpose. All right, so uh, the next question. So now we have uh, the necessary knowledge. So back to the thing, we have two things to solve. So first is knowledge about the world. And the second thing is right level of abstraction. So now the question is how to get the right level of abstraction. So for the Twitter data, I mean, it's actually have a different length of tweets. So the first thing that we can do is to, um, to make them the same, same length, I mean, at least similar. So we cut them into the similar length of tweets and then we can um, do sorts of things. For example, removing the words that appears too often or too less, because if it appears too less, then it probably doesn't mean much. If, it's, uh, if it appears like too often, then maybe it's just like A, D, like these words, which doesn't contain much information. And uh, apart from that, we can add more filters. For example, we can uh, filter on the word length. For example, we don't want words to be like too long because it probably appear not that often. Um, and uh, probably we don't, well, we want to remove some stop words with like A, D, N, because these words doesn't contain any information. I mean, it do contain some information, but it's not that important when coming to understand things. And uh, we can also do like lemmatizations, stemming, as uh, my colleague Tahir previously mentioned. And on the left is uh, uh, is a is an example code about how we're gonna do with uh, these words. For example, we have a list of uh, documents here, right here, and we can remove the stop words. We can uh, remove the, some words based on the um, based on the frequencies, and then we can create this corpus of text, which which we're gonna use for our model. And uh, by doing that, we can achieve the right level of abstraction. Okay, um, so let's move on. So um, the next thing that uh, I'm gonna introduce is how to understand tweets based on the model. So for example, if we have a tweet, we have a model already, we can load the model, we can load the LDA model, and then using some new information, like for example here, computer time graph, that's probably coming from one tweet, and survey respond EPS is probably come with second tweets. Human system computer from probably come from a, a third tweets. And uh, we can actually see that, uh, I mean, we, we can get the topic probability um, given a document. For example, the first one, we can just show that what is the uh, probability of topics that it might uh, contain using the pre-trained model that we have in the first place. So uh, I'm just gonna, gonna give a, a brief visualization of how, what is happening. For example, this is the documents that you have, and uh, you have a very list of uh, topics which you set in the beginning. Like here is 12, but we are using like 100 previously. And for each one of them in that topics, we're gonna have a probability distribution. So each topic has a, a source of its own probability that might uh, happen in this document. And by taking the, I mean, here I'm taking three, but by taking the few significant uh, probabilities, we can consider them as the identity. It's like the DNA in the documents. We can consider them as a identity of the topic, uh, of the document. So in that case, we know that what is this topic about because the topic was represented by those topics, uh, sorry, the documents. So now we know what is this documents about because the documents was rep uh, represented by these topics. 
by these identities. And the next thing that we can do is how to uh, find similarities of tweets, um, like two, I mean, between like one and the other. So here we have three examples. So we have this uh, first one, which contains river, water, shore. The second one contains finance, money, uh, cell. And the third one contains finance, bank, tree, and water. And uh, we, can, uh, we can compare the similarities of uh, these three documents by calculating this uh, distance measurement called uh, Hillinger distance matrix, which give an output of range between zero and one for two probability distribution. And the value closer to zero means they are more similar. So in this case, uh, the, the one that is closer to zero is uh, this uh, finance and bank, which is true. I mean, it's more closer than like water and finance. And uh, uh, now I'm going to give a brief summary of uh, uh, what we can do with the topic modeling on Twitter data. Uh, for, um, for digital humanity problems, uh, there are various of research uh, that we can do. I mean, we can do this kind of sentiment clustering because we do a lot of sentiment analysis on the data. On the data. So from the list of topics which I showed previously, you can actually find uh, some topics which related to happiness, some topics related to like sadness. And then based on that, you can do sentiment cluster by analyzing a new document. So is that more towards to happiness or towards sadness? So you can do this kind of uh, sentiment clustering. And the second thing we can do is to evaluate and uh, track events progression. So uh, from, the, my, from my previous um, presentation, I have demonstrated that you can understand the topics from a document. So if you have a single event that you wish to track for, a, for a digital humanity purposes through the Twitter, um, you can always see that how the topic change through time. So if, for example, if an event is happening, uh, at that time, it's gonna change it to a topic that can describe that event. So that's how you can understand the Twitter with the LDA. And also we can do like topic analysis, which describes all the topics through time. So you can have, uh, an, I mean, or like not through time, like or in purpose for, or, or in general. For example, if you have a, a large chunk of Twitter data, that you collected and you want to see that what people are talking about it in the data that we created. We can do a topic analysis. So it shows us an idea about uh, what are the major topics inside that document. And uh, I mean, there are, there are actually a lot more things that we can do with topic modeling. And uh, I mean, yeah, we can do so much more with Jensen and uh, for uh, a detailed information about topic modeling and gensums. I do, I do recommend, um, I mean, if anybody is interested to go through the documents online, it is like really detailed and have, uh, I mean, it has a step, uh, step for step uh, tutorials. All right, so that's the end of my part. And now we have the question answering uh, session. So uh, everyone's got the opportunity to unmute their own mic if they have any questions or alternatively, alternatively if you'd rather put them into the chat um, and, uh, and let everyone pick them up from there, it's entirely up to you. Uh, I know we're right up against the, the sort of one hour window. So uh, if there are any questions, let's get them in, please. Um, I mean, uh, sorry, I, I just saw some questions in the slides. Uh, yes, so we're going to provide the slides, I think. And uh, is there any questions regarding to the content? Okay, so what's the criteria for the lemmatization? I guess that will be two to here, I would think. What's the quite what's the criteria for lemmatization? Um, for uh, lemmatization, um, 
think uh, so. Let I me mean, let me make sure. Um, right. Let's go back to that. Part. So. Um, for lemmatization, what is the criteria? So I think lemmatization is uh, basically converted back to the, the same words that contains the similar meaning. And it's done with some, um, basically there's something called word nets, which uh, stores the connection between words and it's done by that. It's, the, it's not like, like the root version of the word, it's like the common meaning of the word. For example, like N, R, is, they're all, Converted to B. Okay. And then there's another question there is are the stop words mainly prepositions? Um, yes, yes, mainly. Uh, I think they have like a full list of stop words uh, somewhere in the in, in the library. If you check it, I mean, usually stop words are those ones that, uh, I mean, containing not much uh, information about something. So, yeah, but it's mainly about prepositions, maybe. Just but not not only. That's okay. The part. Uh, I know when Tahir was speaking, I think he was saying that you can add your own um, stop words to that package. Was that right? Is it? Yes. Is it yes. possible to then take out ones that perhaps you are interested in for a, a particular reason? Can you modify it in that way as well? Yes, yes. I mean, uh, it, it really depends on like how much you know about it. Uh, the reason why they have a list of stop words is just for people to have an easier um, access to these functions. But you can do like whatever you want if you really have the knowledge and you have an interest of uh, which ones you want to keep, which ones you want to uh, throw away. It's just up to you. Okay. Uh, and then there's another question then just come in. Is it feasible to carry out a sentiment analysis based on keywords associated with a specific polarity? Um, is it feasible to carry out some keywords associated with a specific polarity? Uh, I'm not sure if I get this. Um, can you just clarify what you mean there, Diana, then, for that question, please? Uh, are you still there, Diana? Oh, yes, yes, you are still there on the list. Okay, so I'm going to open it to the best of recovery. Okay, does that help? Um, that clarification there. So I'm working on a model for post disaster recovery assessment. Yes, I mean, if the keywords itself contains a certain um, negative or positive, yes. I mean, yes, yes, I think so. Yes, you can do it. Basically, I mean, you can, uh, for example, you can, uh, you can create certain topics which contains those words. And uh, if those words, you already have a certain um, association with the uh, sentiment, for example, positive, negative, and neutrals, then definitely you can, you can do that. Okay, does that help, Diana? Does that clarify it for you? Um, yes, actually, there are various of ways you can do it. So the one of the things that I can think of is just to um, create a dictionary of all these words and uh, <clears throat> and uh, for the values associated to each word, for example, like positive, negative, or neutral. And uh, then you can loop through all the, the, the Twitter data that you have and uh, adding up those values for each one of the tweets. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. 
Okay, any more questions? Because I am aware that we're now uh, a little bit over time. So have we got any other questions? This is great because the um, all the guys last week doing the um, the digital health one, there wasn't a single question. So it's really nice to get some uh, some feedback and some questions uh, about you. So if we got anything else from anyone? Oh, uh, yes. I mean, yes. We you can you can do the same for other social platforms. It's not really like it's not uh, specifically restricted to Twitter. Uh, it's just the. Uh, um, I mean, because in, in, in terms of how many number of topics, for example, if you want to do like topic modeling and it depends on like how many number of topics you wish to get out of it, uh, you really need to look back into the data and see whether it's fits to the purpose. But yes, you can use it for other, like any data basically. Okay, anybody else, anything else coming up? You're welcome. Okay, so I'm not seeing any more questions there. Yeah, I will. Oh. I can make a question by talking. Okay, yeah, yeah, go for it. Hi. Yeah, usually, you extract the it, the data is mainly extracted for from Twitter. Is easier than extract the data from Instagram or Facebook? Mm, I haven't, I mean, uh, that's a good question. I haven't really tried other ones. I think Twitter is a bit more easier because it provides a, a tool, like it, it has its own, I mean, major of the researches are based on Twitter. It's just easier for people to get the data, really. Okay, thanks. Okay, so... I think that's everything. So I'm happy to wrap up there if there aren't any more questions. Uh, I know there was a question about getting the, the slides out to everyone. Um, so what we'll look to do, we've recorded the session and it'll obviously need a little bit of, of editing and, and whatever and uh, just pop a couple of other little bits of information into it. Um, so it'll take a little while for me to get that done, but we'll build that onto a, a sort of a resources page uh, on the NHCIR website with slides and links to the video and a little overview of what's been covered. Um, so uh, we'll send that round as soon as, uh, as, soon as it's done and live. Um, we'll send out a little post event survey in the next couple of days as well. Um, and just thank you very much to everyone for attending um, and staying around as we've run over as well. Um, but if there's nothing else, I'll wrap it up and, and end the meeting there, if that's okay with everyone. Okay, I shall wrap it up then. Thank you very much indeed, everyone. Have a, a great afternoon when you finish.